Hi, Mark Oswald hosting another segment of London Dairy Heart, Home, and Soul. A lot of talk in town about a proposed auditorium. So I have the masterminds with me. Tony DiFrancesco, welcome. Thank you. Good to be and here. And Mr. Nate Greenberg, our superintendent of schools. Hi, Mark. I'm going to let you start, Nate, with kind of the genesis behind this, <coughs> what, kind of the, the brief history lesson, I guess. Yeah, actually, the auditorium project goes back a number of years. People remember several years ago, uh, the board asked uh, a group of people to come together and make a proposal for an auditorium. This was in response to the New England Association of Schools and Colleges report. Came forward with it, and that wound up laying dormant for a while. This fall, the board again initiated uh, the committee again in response to the New England Association Accreditation Report. The idea was that that was the only real deficiency that the accreditation agency saw. And so they agreed to form a committee uh, of which we were lucky enough to have Tony Chair made up of community members and, and some faculty members. And uh, they have come forth with what we consider to be an outstanding proposal and one that was endorsed by the school board. Uh, so our hope is that the proposal will move forward, um, and as Tony will explain later, it's on the ballot March 10th, and we're here today to get some additional information out to the community. No, I appreciate your time. So the proposal for the ballot is for architectural and engineering monies, correct? Yes. To fund that. And the schools had a very solid history, if I'm not mistaken, of... Uh, an estimate of the total proposed cost and then using that percentage for A&E. That's correct. What, what we have done in the past, and it was for all the construction projects that I've been involved with for the last 15 years and even before I came, is to do architectural and engineering costs first, develop the proposal, get a cost to not exceed, and then bring it to the voters the next year for a bond with the voters knowing full well the cost will not exceed that amount. So we right. won't have to go back to the voters again and say, oh, we forgot seats or we forgot this. So it's a, an intelligent way to approach school construction. And I think that's an important distinction. Um, you read in the newspaper all the time about construction projects going overpriced in or over budget in, in other municipalities in New Hampshire and Massachusetts. And that hasn't happened in Londonderry because historically they've done this two-step process where you have a do not exceed price, mm -hmm. it cannot exceed that price. And since I've been in Londonderry uh, since 1978, it has not occurred. So it's a really solid process. And we <coughs> won't name guilty parties. But there's a number of school districts in surrounding communities that have done exactly that. That's correct. They, they've started construction, all of a sudden, oh, we're a little bit short here, like That's a right. lot of short. Correct. Uh, correct. So. And with this system, that cannot happen right. okay. in London Dairy. And so you, you've uh, overseen a, a committee of uh, civic-minded people, yes. you know, school people, community people, uh, those representing different groups and activities in town. Uh, and studied this thing and come up with a conclusion that it's going to be, I think, 800 seats? It is. It's 800 seats, and we, we have uh, a wonderful group of, of hardworking people who have donated their time for the last year and a half to study uh, this proposal. And um, what we found out was, uh, based on a lot of reasons, uh, the 800-seat model uh, is a good model for Londonderry. And that's been signed off on by um, uh, the superintendent, obviously, the school board, uh, the principal of, uh, of the schools, uh, the music department, the drama departments. They're all, everyone's in agreement that this 800-seat uh, model that, that, that we have drafted uh, is the appropriate one. Uh, and it's also uh, appropriate um, from a price standpoint as well. Right. Nate had mentioned the uh, is it New England accreditation. I didn't get all the. It's the New England Association of Schools and Colleges. Yes, and right. they go through an accreditation process. Correct. Uh, you found Tony, I think, with the committee's work, uh, something that at the school deliberative se session that I was quite surprised by. I think there's ten, the top ten high schools in the state, and there's only one that doesn't have an auditorium. 
That's right, and, and that would be Londonderry. So the, and that was a citizen uh, who came forward with, with that information. I mm -hmm. did uh, double check uh, those facts, and they are accurate. Uh, of the top 10 uh, in, uh, in New Hampshire, uh, Londonderry is the only one that does not have an auditorium. Okay. Um, and it's, it, you know, it's, it's, <coughs> it's unfortunate. Um, uh, starting back in 1978 or pre-1978 when the high school was being planned, uh, it's unfortunate that it was taken off of the plans for uh, cost consideration because a high school, uh, in general terms, uh, should have a, an auditorium. Yeah. So we've got uh, a model depicting the, the proposed auditorium in front of us, which is the, the white structure? It is. It's the white structure. Okay. Um, it's what, what's called the cafeteria site. Uh, it is a perfect site uh, in that it's uh, separate from the school, so if we need to isolate it, we can. Uh, it has easy access for students. It has easy access to the general public. Uh, the Department of Transportation has signed off on it. Uh, and it's a relatively inexpensive parcel of land to build on as well. Right. So part of the reason I do some of these programs is rumor control. Sure. There's, you, can't, you can't believe everything that, that you hear or read. So uh, I guess part of that is, so we've got uh, roughly 1,500 in high school now, I think, enrollment. So this is going to be essentially half of the enrollment. How was that number arrived at? Yes, the, the, the school department and the high school uh, told us, including the guidance folks, said that um, uh, having a, an auditorium that, that would um, uh, seat half of the total student population uh, would be an appropriate one. Mm -hmm. uh, that in fact they did not need one uh, to house uh, the entire um, um, school population and that uh, the appropriate size would be about half. So uh, with the 800 seats we're in good shape with the half by the time you get the teachers and guest speakers and whatever else in there. Okay. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's a good number. And I know there's been a lot of talk about the fact that it's a community facility much like a lot of the school facilities are yes. now. And, and Nate, you can probably do this off the top of your head. There's how many hundreds of activities weekly? Uh, about 250. We average about 8,000 a year. Uh, activities that are after school and on weekends. Some mm -hmm. are obviously are school, a uh, large number of community. And I think you have to look at the auditorium as being an extension of that or a high school facility and would be available to community members just like the rest of our school facilities are. Okay, so dance recitals and Correct. Uh, drama events, all, yes. all of that. Yes. Okay, excellent. Uh, how is this paid for? We're, we're talking about a multi-million dollar right. facility. Uh, the auditorium would be paid for in the same manner in which all our other school construction was paid for. That would be through a bond. Um, with the article this year, getting the architectural and engineering fees and doing all that work, would give us the figure in which we could then go to the voters next March with a bond proposal. And let's say it's $8 million or $9 million. And then if that, in fact, passed, we would then finance it through a bond. Um, the exact cost at this point, uh, I don't think you could nail down specifically because of the variation in interest rates. But what we have seen over the last several years, very, very good interest rates mm -hmm. on uh, municipal bonds. And I think one of the things, too, is that we have an extremely good rating, uh, mm -hmm. bond rating. So we would get uh, prime consideration for uh, excellent uh, interest rate. And we're retiring some debt yes. in the next year or two, right? Yeah, uh, about the time. Uh, this bond would, we would begin to pay off a bond if it was voted on um, um, to March, um, a week, a year from this March. Um, we would be retiring when we would then begin to pay off that bond. The middle school bond would be uh, retired and this would then move into its place. Okay, all right. The, uh, the tax rate, I mean people, you know, I deal with real estate so I, you know. No one likes property taxes in New Hampshire, uh, and, and I don't care the town. Uh, but Londonderry right now is about twenty-one dollars a thousand. So what I've learned in my practice is we are very competitive now. When we start looking at neighboring communities, mm -hmm. I won't name them, that are anywhere from twenty-four to thirty dollars 
per thousand. Um, so I'd like to at least get that out there for, yep. for the viewers to know that I, I think both the town and the school uh, you know, have been vigilant you know, in trying to reduce costs. I know, Nate, with your leadership and the school board over the years, uh, to avoid tuition and students out, uh, any number of, of uh, uh, measures that you've taken Correct. have resulted, I think, in a, in a pretty steady tax rate. Uh, the, we talked about community, so it's not just a high school facility, it's just not a school facility. It's not, <clears throat> it's not, and it's an important distinction that, that, that this will, um, as it sits on the land, as it's built, um, it's truly uh, designed uh, to be a school slash community used facility. Uh, what the committee found out through its investigation was that 60 percent of the use of a, of a, um, a, a school auditorium is curriculum based. And so we know right off the bat that we have 40 percent um, of the time left over mm -hmm. uh, where the community will have use uh, after school, nights, weekends, holidays, vacations, whenever it happens to be. Much like, as, as Nate said earlier, any of the school facilities are open virtually uh, 20 hours a day uh, for use by the community. And, and the community uses them quite frequently yep. and, and they use them quite well. This facility will be no different. Yep. And, and I think the schools demonstrated over several decades their mastery at scheduling. Right. I mean, just the logistics and the coordination, whether it's sporting events or drama or music and community events, uh, you can drive by any of the schools at night and there's everything from adu uh, adult volleyball to brownies and Cub Scouts and yep. churches on, on Sundays and yes. a, a lot going on. Absolutely. A lot going uh, they're, on. They're, they're true the community facilities and, and like I say, this, this facility will be no different. So what, what's the need for this facility? You, you touched on the accreditation. I, I, and Tony touched on it too. There's academic need. Everything from utilizing technology to Skype re, uh, classes, uh, remote learning, to uh, auditorium types of presentations for students, for students to have an opportunity to present in an auditorium setting. I think we're all well aware of the high quality music program that we have, drama program that we have, giving those kids an opportunity in a venue to participate there, uh, having an opportunity to bring in guest speakers to present to the uh, student body. Those are all key elements. And I would suggest too that online, on our school board uh, webpage, if you go to the auditorium report, pages 32 to 36, give a specific breakdown of all of the activities, all of the potential activities that we mm -hmm. could have that would benefit from a uh, auditorium. So, and then one of the other things too, which may seem small to some people, but it's some feedback that we've gotten from some of our graduates, that many of the other students that they encounter in college uh, have had an opportunity to take classes in an auditorium. So when you go to college mm -hmm. and now you're in a freshman class with 200 students and sitting in an auditorium, there's a whole new set of skills they have to learn right. that other students have already mastered because they have had that facility mm -hmm. um, in their school, so in their high school. So I think the advantages are there academically. The advantages are there for co-curricular activities. Um, so it enhances and I think will be an integral part of our school program. Um, and I think it's, it can be a showcase for the outstanding talent we have uh, as far as our students are concerned, both academically, musically, and drama-wise. Um, and I think it's something that our students really deserve to have those skills and those opportunities and those experiences. Right. So I think I heard you say or suggest earlier that it's probably the eight to nine million dollar range. All the more reason that we would encourage voters to participate in the election and if the A&E uh, warrant is passed then we'll have a real number a year from now. Correct. It, it won't be a guesstimate, if you will, Correct. between eight or nine million. It'll be a number not to exceed because they will have gone through significant 
not that you, Tony, and the committee has, right. have, have done a whale of a job, sure. uh, yet these are going to be licensed professionals, engineers, architects, that will honeycomb that and, uh, sure. and have it down to <coughs> you know, linear foot for lumber or cinder block or light fixtures or what absolutely. have you. Absolutely, yes, absolutely. Okay. Good. Uh, final thoughts? I think um, it's important, and Nate, Nate um, uh, talked about it a little bit. The, the committee is very, <clears throat> very proud of the report uh, that was produced. It's a 72-page report. Um, this has all the answers. Um, the, there, there is no reason to wonder. Uh, the general public shouldn't be um, uh, felt like they're in the dark about what's going on because in this report it has uh, every answer to any question that you could possibly have. It is on the school district um, uh, website. And uh, you can download it, you, you can read it, uh, and um, it, it, it specifically shows the need, it shows how big it is, where it's going to be, and um, it's a very, very comprehensive report um, that, again, th there's no mystery, the answers are in this report. Is <coughs> there a common thread? Is there a most persistent misperception about this proposal? There's confusion uh, concerning the music department and the difference between the marching band and the concert bands. And people get very confused with, well, you have, uh, uh, why does the marching band need an auditorium? The marching band does not need an auditorium. The they, concert, can't, they can't come down the they, aisles? Come on, that would be they, impressive. They really. can, and they're welcome to do that, and that's, <laughs> and that's up to the scheduling folks and, and Andy Susi, who does a wonderful job with the music department. but. This is not about the marching band. This is about the concert bands and the chorus and the choirs and the and the string orchestras and and um, and and those types of things. Uh, that's what this facility is for. It's it's totally different things. Uh, two, well, two and totally that, different animals. that many of the <coughs> members of the marching band are in Correct. orchestra Correct. or choral groups yes. or the drama department. Yes. And it's the Absolutely. same. It's the same children as Andy says. 33% of the current Lenardary High School population participates in some form of the music department. Mm -hmm. That doesn't include drama. 33% participate in the music program in some form or fashion. That's a huge number. Yeah. It's, huge. it's a lot of kids. Yeah. So when you're in Lenardary High School, you're not a band geek. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. There's a few that play on the football team, et cetera, et cetera. Absolutely. So, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, thank you both. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank and, you. And your effort at getting the word out, uh, accurate and factual information is always important uh, with a weighted decision like this. And we'll encourage the voters to, uh, to come out on uh, March 10th, 10th, I believe it is, right? March 10th. At the high school. Yes. 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Yes. Terrific. Thank you. Good thank luck. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Lindenberry, for watching. Remember, as always, please be of good heart.